So welcome to the first event in the Ask the Expert series on personal branding. As I mentioned before, my name is Alethea O'Hara Stevenson, your host and moderator for the night. The event is being organized by the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association, otherwise known as DCCBA, a nonprofit organization established to provide leadership for the continued development and enhancement of the Black community through civic engagement, education, programs and services, and advocate for the equity and well-being for the Black community in Dufferin County. The Dufferin County Canadian Black Association is committed to being a true community partner, working with other established agencies to bring value to the Dufferin County committee, community. Some of these agencies and organizations include Dufferin County, the town of Shelburne, Flatter Development, Developments Inc., Fieldgate Homes, Upper Grand District School Board, Andrew E. Guy's um, Greatest Impact University, just to name a few. Our association is inclusive and welcoming to all who wish to volunteer, provide feedback, sign up or attend events and future programs. As president and founder, I am excited to have uh, my executive team on board with us tonight. We have Jordane Stevenson, as well as Gear Harvey, who uh, make up our executive team. We also have a number of distinguished, distinguished guests and supporters with us tonight. We have our very own Deputy Mayor Steve Anderson from the town of Shelburne. We also have Chris Garrett, Deputy Mayor Chris Garrett from um, the town of Amaranth, and another supporter, Jade Wise from Shelburne uh, Public Library, and so many more. So thank you very much for coming out. So before we get uh, into introducing our honored guest and our keynote speaker, I encourage you all to sit up straight, sit up tall, and take in the amazing message and information that you're going to gather here tonight. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for coming out to support our inaugural event, Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. Before we get um, to our speaker, just a few housekeeping items. Your mics will be muted um, throughout the, the presentation portion of it. If you have any questions, please feel free to use our chat and submit any questions you have there. And uh, we will pause at about 7.35 or perhaps even earlier to reflect and take up some of the questions that you, um, you may have. Or if you feel more comfortable having your questions answered live, uh, we can definitely do that as well around 7.30 mark. For any questions that we don't get a chance to answer in today's forum, um, we will definitely collect that information for you and submit them um, by email to you so that you can have access to all of the um, great questions and answers that uh, will come up from today's session. So without, Further delay, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker and presenter for tonight, Mr. Andrew E. Guy. Andrew Guy is a corporate consultant with the Work Life Enrichment Seminars. As a personal development coach, Andrew helps professionals and entrepreneurs to balance work life so they can enrich their living. As a skilled presenter, seminar facilitator, international speaker, Andrew delivers highly engaging interactive seminars to corporate industries and education on the following topics mental health and wellness, work your words, which is also his best-selling book. It's not balance you need, it's work-life enrichment for the busy, the anatomy of building a great team, leadership for the driven with followers in mind. Raising the bar on your creativity where you live, work and play, understanding culture and diversity at work, and of course, personal and business branding. Andrew is a best-selling author, best known for Work Your Words, of Finding Your Pathway to Personal Success. He's the host of the newly disruptive podcast, I'm Listening, I'm Ready, a weekly podcast for people and professionals on the go who want to make a positive change in their lives, as well as where they live, where they work, and where they play. Through his engaging talks, he inspires executive staff, municipal officials, uh, businessmen, women, developing professionals, school districts, teachers, youth, um, the list goes on and on to develop a deeper understanding of purpose, strive to find meaning in all that they do, develop skills, improve relationships, and know who you are in your area of expertise. Without further delay, please welcome Andrew E. Guy. Thank you for joining us, Andrew. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. 
I'm excited. The song that was playing at the beginning of the session was just powerful to get, you know, get the momentum going, get the energy going. And it is powerful to, you know, with this topic on personal branding, here we are at the start of the yes. year. And, you know, what better way to set us up for success than to talk about, you know, personal branding and what it means. So without further delay, Andrew, can you take it away? What is personal branding? All right, but let me just first um, just want to thank everyone that took time out of leaders, want to thank all the staff and just the town of Shelburne. You know, we go way back, and I just want to say thank you guys for allowing me to come out and share some information with you. Before we go on, I want to let you know that if anything that you should take away from this presentation, from this call to action, is that you are. Okay, if you have a pencil, I want you to write that down. And then after you write that down, I want you to commit that to memory. I want you to commit that to habit. I want you to commit that to behavior. Brand before there was even a product made. Before you get up out of the bed, you are the brand. Before the first product rolled off the assembly line, you are the brand. Before they told you that you could not, you are the brand in the belly are the brand. So I hope that plays in your head over and over and over again. Whether you fell down and get up, you know, Nelson Mandela always saying that it's not how many times you fall, it's how many times you get up. Getting up is a brand. It means that you're resilient. It means that you refuse to be succumbed by the nuances of life. You okay? So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go over just a few um I would say headlines, or should a call to action, a few basic things that I'm gonna share my slides. So um, Althea, if you can give me a moment and allow me to uh, share my screen here, then I'm gonna go ahead and just share a few things with these guys to let them know some basics. I want them to get this basic because when you have a basic fundamental understanding of what it is, then it will change your behavior, whether you're online or offline or wherever you show up in this global marketplace. And so if you can give me that and then I'll go ahead and just share my screen, okay? Perfect, you should have access to share. All right, so I am that guy right there. Can you guys see that? Do you guys see that word that says brand identification? Now the word brand identification is a, a, it's an acronym that simply means the brand you. The brand you, brand, you are identification that basically goes before you, it follows you, it supersedes your every behavior, whether you're sleeping. This brand definition is how you show up in the marketplace, okay? And one of the discussions that we're gonna have moving forward is a concern of how are we showing up online? So when you think of brand identification, I want you to think of how you show up. And if you don't the level of professionalism that you want to represent or almost like pretending that the world or the marketplace was your taste bud and whatever you put, whatever taste you leave in their mouth basically is that's how you're gonna be remembered. A great friend of mine always said that you are as good as your last game. This is brand identification. How do you show up? Do you identify yourself? I know that we're in a world now where we're talking about how do you identify yourself? I identify myself as a he or she or it or them, whatever. So this is also going back to the case of brand identification. And the subtitle to that is simply this, redefine, reposition, represent who you are in the global marketplace. That's Brandon is brown from the 1500s, 1500s. And a lot of people are shocked. Are you serious, Andrew? Yes, from the 1500 branding has been around, but only a few things have changed. And the reason why there's been some changes in the approach to branding is because people's emotions change, right? So branding, action of brand. Brand may be the representation, but branding is the active process by which you help and you make the connection between individuals emotionally. So we're dealing with their fears, their frustration. We're dealing with their dreams, their desires, their aspiration, and 
trying to relieve or alleviate those pain points. That branding is the verb part of the noun brand, all right? So we're trying to make sure that we can redefine it, reposition, represent. When I say represent, it doesn't mean represent. Represent meaning that you're gonna to have to show the world a new you. It's not about, for example, when I go to speak, people may say, well, Andrew, you're a black man, or I may say that I'm originally from Jamaica. I might say that I've attended Southern Arkansas University, but that's really not who I am. I have to represent who I represent. So you have to do that again by what? Showing them your skills, talents, and expertise, and how you meet a need in the marketplace. And you do and all your services, all right? Let's move Andrew, on to uh, a few of the agendas that we're going to cover today. So yes. Andrew, we're, you're breaking up a Go little ahead. bit. Um, you're, sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. I don't know if the, um, you can adjust your setting on your end. All right, can you hear me now? Yep, we're good. Perfect. Carry all on. All right. All right, okay. All right, so let's recap. Um, hope everyone got that. We're talking about branding. I'm saying that you have to redefine, you have to reposition, and you're going to have to present yourself to the world, to the global marketplace. There's some things that we want to talk about. Awareness. So why this? Why now? And why not? Why this? Because you are important. You are the brand. And until you identify yourself and what you represent in the marketplace, anyone can put a label on you. Anyone can put a tag. So you want to know who you are in the marketplace, how to show up. That's why this is important. Why now? Today is the day. Branding doesn't just look at what happened yesterday because this happened in the 1500s um, and not just what's going to happen tomorrow. The future is talking about today. Why? Because the experiences that you have from using a product and or service will basically determine if you're going to stay with the product or and or service and or if you are going to tell someone else about your experience. This is why it's why this, why now and why not? No, why not? You would not tell someone about a product and or service if you have a terrible experience, right? And so this is why those words are so key. The insight. So what is a brand versus branding? So brand may be the representation of yourself. It could simply be a sign. It could be a word. It could be a picture. It could just be a slogan, right? But branding, as I mentioned, is the active part that the company makes between them, the product, and the consumer. So that's the branding aspect of it. When we talk about this experience, this branding aspect has to do with the evidence of a perceived promise. So if um, there was a few years ago, Red Bull came out with a slogan and it said, Red they give you this is why you need to understand how you show up in the marketplace and the message that you're putting out there that represents you and or your product and service. Red Bull came out and they said, um, we give you wings. And then after um, they were taken to court and sued, and the person won the case because the drink and or service did not fulfill the promise. So a brand basically may be a statement and or picture and or a slogan, but branding is how you connect with the consumer. If your connection does not line up or stand strong or represent what you said you're going to do, then promise. And then that's when your customer and or consumer may complain, or they may even take you to court because you didn't do or fulfill your end of the bargain. This is why branding, it is so effective. It is so important. It's not so much the brand, it's the branding process. That's what's most important. Branding may take on different forms. Branding may take on the book. Branding may take on a product, just like I'm holding this um, tape measure right in front of me and it says Stanley. It Stanley is, doesn't just make tape measure. They make many different kinds of tools, okay? 
but how it shows up, it shows up in black and yellow because that is the colors that they use to represent themselves in the marketplace. Those combination is a way that you can use to differentiate yourself from other such things or from Coca-Cola or from Sprite or from all the other soft drinks that are out there. This is what brand does, but the branding process is the experience and the connection that the consumer has after using your product. So why do we need to be concerned about this problem and or solution? Because when you think of branding, Branding really is really trying to focus on solving a problem, solving a problem because they're trying to find out what are the fears, what are the frustrations and what are the pain points and or desires and dreams of the individuals who are consuming your product. It is very, very important that we understand that because if our product and or service doesn't calm a fear, deal with a frustration, solve or null a pain point, or fulfill a desire or make a dream come true, you are not branding. You simply just have a product with a name and or a logo on it. You're not branding. Branding is intrusive. It's not about what you see or what you believe. It's the feelings and the emotion that elicit that experience. So when we think about branding, it's just like logging on to social media. When you log on to social media, you elicit your presence, your very presence elicit a response to those who are interacting or engaging with you. That's the most important part of branding or having a present in the marketplace, all right? Let's move on. The next thing that I wanna talk about here is this. See it. When we look at brand, he said, why this, why now? Because we need to know this. Why? Because we spend more time virtually than we do in person. Why? Because of the pandemic. And, and there's so many different um, selective meeting place that kind of just coming together as we would naturally would like to do. But because of this, we need to understand branding and how we show up even more so today than we did um, 1500 years ago. Why? Because branding is bold. It's a bold statement that elicited a specific behavior. B, it's a bold statement that elicit a certain behavior. If you hear the term obey your thirst, what will you think about? You're not going to think about Coca-Cola. You are going to think about what? Sprite. And then as soon as you think of Sprite, then you're going to start imagining what's the color? because then elicit the emotion or the emotional attachment and the behavior. And then you're gonna to wanna to put a picture towards it. What does this look like? So I take the emotions, I take the feelings, and then I need to have an object that basically represents this feeling that I'm actually having. The R is a responsive emotional change. Why? This is why we have competition in the marketplace. That's why we talked about you have to redefine yourself and yourself and represent yourself. Why? Because there's competition everywhere. There are many speakers everywhere, but I am not many speaker. I am one speaker. And just like I have four fingers and one thumb, which gives me five phalanges on the same hand, each finger has a different print, but it's on the same hand. Does that make sense? And I hope that you understand that you, the person, can show up in many different ways in the marketplace. I can show up as a book. I can show up as an online course. I can show up as a live chat. I can show up as a webinar. I can show up in many different forms, but I'm the same person. And each form that I show up in elicit a different emotional experience. Someone may read Work Your Words and say, wow, Andrew, my goodness, man, this is amazing. I love the part that says this. I love the part when you talk about Simba. I love the part when you talk about, hey, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. And words change your life. Say, wow. But now when I show up with a live presentation, like, oh, my goodness, like, dude, you, you just, oh, man, wow. I, I want to say something right now, but my mic is mute. And I know how you're feeling because now I'm, I'm eliciting a different response. When I am doing a speaking engagement, I give 200%. I leave everything, sweat and everything on the carpet, on the stage because that's how I show up. I wanna let you know that I spend the time, I do the research, I prepare myself in advance. And when I show up, I'm giving the first time. There is no second chance 
to redo a bad taste that you left in someone else's mouth. And that's part of the branding experience. If you give them a bad experience, then they're going to talk about it and it's, they're not going to want to share it. Let's move on. Awareness. Brand, branding is an awareness. And you need that awareness. If you don't have that awareness, then basically you don't have branding. And when we talk about the end in brand, it, it needs to be noticed. It needs to be noticed. Branding calls for you to notice it, right? Let me move something out. I have a, a speaker in my way here, a tab. Hang tight. There we go. All right. So the D in branding means that is distinct, is deliberate, is distinctive because you see it anywhere you go. If you see, uh, let's say, a billboard and you see red, blue, and you have a specific kind of cursive writing, you know that's going to be Coca Cola, red and white. It doesn't matter where you go. As soon as you see it, it's distinct. It's there. It pops out. It's direct. It's only speaking to individuals who drink Coke. That's what it's talking about. But the people who have a great experience with Coca-Cola will want to tell somebody about it. And then that's creating curiosity. And then they want to say, well, maybe I should try it. And then when they try it and they have a good experience, remember, because branding is the experience and emotional connection they have with a product and or service, then they may want to tell someone else. Branding is disruptive. It doesn't matter how you feel about another product. The purpose of introducing another product is to disrupt that feeling and or attachment that you have to one product and say, listen, I want you to come over to our side of the fence. So it's disruptive. It doesn't matter how good that experience you had yesterday. They're always working to see if they can top that to make sure that you have a better experience today than you had yesterday. And they're going to try to do that tomorrow. This is how we connect and this is how we hold on to what's called the customer relationship. It's deliberate. It's not an accident. Everything that you see out there is deliberate. The colors that they use, the fonts that they use, where they place the ad, where they place the advertisement, how they market to you on social media. Everything is deliberate. Nothing is by accident, right? And you need to understand that. Have only a few more slides, I'm gonna move on, okay? because I want to get some of your question. So when we talk about this awareness, you know, you have to understand that you have a personal power. This personal power has been around from the 1500s. You have it. It's an internal power that you have. And when you express yourself, this is your brand. And you're hoping that when people see this expression based on the impression that you have for yourself, then they will connect with you emotionally. This is the name for everyone that's participating or competing within the marketplace. The one that makes you feel the best, that's the one that you're going to go with. If you drink Coca-Cola and you just feel good about yourself, feels great, elicit a change in you, elicit some kind of emotional change, then you're going to do it. Even if you went to a church, there are many churches out there. If that preacher speak directly into your life, motivating you, inspiring you, so you get transformed, so you can be empowered to make the change that you need to do, you're going to go back again. You're going to go back again. That is branding as a result of the brand being expressed, okay? Nothing is new. The only thing that you know that certain that we evolved, and brands have evolved to meet the emotional changes that people go through. Five people may be in a room, but every one of them have a different feeling towards a specific product and or service. A behavior or mindset can only survive if there is a system to support it. What is the system? The marketplace. The marketplace is not just an intangible thing. The marketplace is you. The marketplace is the feelings. It's the playing ground where all the feelings and emotional come together. And so products are just really trying to look, trying to figure out who do I fish out? And the one that has the best hook and or net will catch the bigger fish. That's what it, it's about. And they need to have to support that actual brand and or branding. Okay. We are not only affected, we are the carriers of the brand. We are the carriers of the brand. And according to 99design.com, they said that actually branding begins in the 1500s, but a major shift took place in the 19th and 20th century 
through the decades of experimentation and technological advances. Why? Because when I think about just running shoes, back in the day, Converse used to be the thing that was great. It did everything, right? But now we're talking about the contours of the feet. We're talking about how the feet hits the ground, about mobilizing and moving and ambulation. The feet hit the ground at a certain angle. And we notice in biomechanics, when we look at how the heel strike happened, the flat foot and the toe off and the swing through. Why does this matter? Because shoes now have to adapt to the changing, um, should I say anatomy and or physiology to improve performance. And that's the big part. That's the result. That's the payoff. Brands, people have learned how to break through the clutter to capture the attention of the customer and turning in different customers into brand enthusiasts. This I credit to 99design.com, okay? Now, my rendition of you have a brand, but you need to understand how do I get my product and or service before individual? How do I get them to participate? There are two ways I can do that. It's marketing and advertisement. So what is marketing? Marketing is me making that connection, that specific connection to that specific consumer by doing what? Educating the target audience and or individual how your product slash service can best help relieve their pain point. So a lot of people get this confused. They mix marketing with advertisement. It's two different things. Advertisement is simply just putting your product in front of them. You're going into the subway, you see a sign, that's advertisement. Marketing is me telling you how can my product and or service meet your needs. That's exactly what it is. And the one who does the best job at marketing wins the fight. All right. So remember that as you're out there on social media. And now, what does this mean to you? It means that a personal representative in your absence. That's what branding is. Branding is your ambassador. We have branding is an invitation to participate. Branding is a statement of promise. Branding is a belief that you are there to meet a need. Branding is a conviction. Branded is intrusive. It's aggressive. It's contagious. Because when someone has a great experience, they're going to want to tell someone. And if you're ignorant to that, that the word of mouth is the most powerful advertisement ever will fail the brand fight. We look at this right here. I did a presentation a, a few weeks ago and we are talking about systemic racism. And it says that one in every four individuals in America is affected by cancer. And I use cancer as the example because my background is anatomy and physiology. And so when we look at cancer, one in every four in America is affected by it. So when we look at it from a branding perspective, we have people of different shades, different color, different heights and everything. So companies are always trying to figure out how do I meet that person's need? How do I figure out what that person needs? What gets them fired up? What are their fears? What are their frustrations? What are their pain points? And what are their dreams? And so that's what companies do. They sit and they gather and they brainstorm and they come up with different surveys. They use different colors to listen. Um, specific behavior and or emotional response. And then based on these surveys, they bring these matrix back in and they analyze them. And the one that give them the best return or the best feedback, then they move with that while they continue to do more research to find out how many people can they bring on board. Branding is something that we should all care about because it look at these eight dimensions of wellness or well. It looks at the emotional, the intellectual, it looks at the physical, the environment, the financial, occupational, and the social. So when we're talking about branding, it's really trying to target all of these different um, aspects of humanity. It's looking at you spiritually. It's looking at you from an intellectual perspective. If you're an individual that has um, a PhD or you're a professional in the doctor or medical society, then they may approach you differently as opposed to the lay person that works in a factory. We are looking at individual based on the needs that they may have and the emotional responses that they may elicit. This is why branding is so intrusive because it wants to get so wrapped up in your life 
that you eat, you sleep, and you think and live their product and or service. So when you're designing a brand, you're not just looking at um, skin tone. You're not looking at just how close people are in life. You're not just looking at their demographics. You're looking at everything that affects humanity. It's not just about a race. It's about the human. How and service will impact them positively or negatively. Okay, and as I come to a close, now we look at the skin tone, but let's dig a little deeper. Do you think that branding is concerned with what you look like without clothes or underneath the fascia or underneath the tissues? Yes. Because damn, it's the inner part of you that makes the decision to join a brand or participate in a brand. Yes, that person may be wearing a sports bra, but all the way down to the, the skeletal and nervous system, this is the part that helps you to decide what brand should you trust, should you like? This is what makes the difference, right? And as we move further, this right here, there's something that happens when you have an experience with a particular brand, your heart rate may increase and or slow down. There's certain things that happen. All of these may be physiological, but these physio physiological responses also is a feedback mechanism that tells the creator and or the brand enforcer and or marketer what works best because they're looking at you from a functional perspective and from an emotional responsive. And so in a nutshell, this is who I am. They've already told you who I am. This is what I do when I'm not doing webinars. I'm out there doing live presentations. And if you need to get in touch with me, they'll have that information for you. But here's my information in a nutshell. Just want to make it very simple. You can reach me at these individual places um, on YouTube slash Andrew Guy Speaks, Twitter, Andrew Guy Speaks, Instagram, Andrew Guy Speaks. Or you can just knock on my front door and come on home and find me at www.andrewguyspeaks.com. If a question now, let's make it happen. Yes, thank you, Andrew. What a powerful segment. Thank you so much. And we do have right. um, a few pre-submitted questions, but I see we mm -hmm. have one um, that was just submitted in the chat. So I'm going to open it up okay. with that one. Question for from Tevin Heath. Thank you for your question, Tevin. For personal branding, when should someone consider bringing a partner along with the brand or should personal branding be an individual pursuit? For example... Mm -hmm. What capacity would we need to get more help building the brand? I bring this up, especially for young Black entrepreneurs, administrators, and leaders facing barriers going alone. Strength for 2021. All right. We must first um, say the person's name again. Tevin. All right, Tevin. Um, the first thing you need to understand is that, that you are the brand. Are you the originator, creator? Are you the founder of the particular product and or service? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, what kind of emotional ties do you have with the creation and or invention of this particular brand? Am I am I allowed to talk or absolutely yes? Oh yeah. Go ahead. Make it rip, my brother. Okay. Um. Uh. Well. Uh. Actually, it's more or less. Um. So I'm a student. I go to Western University, okay. and um. One of the things that's very important for me is, uh, well, I'm, I'm one of the only uh, black students that are, are actually in the program. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things is, is when I know I'm going to be working for a municipality, I also like to think to myself, while I'm working for a municipality, I also want to uh, create a brand to kind of mentor young um, administrators that are not even aware of the position that, uh, that I, my, I might have got myself into. Um, so I know it's going to take a long time. You got to build up your capacity. Um, and I know I can do it through mentorship. I teach them the educational side of the university, how to study better, how to prepare better. But um, I, can, I can really empower a lot of people. But the portion is sometimes I can overwork myself. And a lot of you know, great mentors tell me you've got to build your own capacity by yourself. You've got to do it for yourself first. And then I, I get overwhelmed because it could take a lot of toll to me. So that's why if I create my own like, style, which is, um, you know, you always got to give back to the community. You got to contribute to society. You got to mentor the youth from not just from university, but from high school, et cetera, et cetera. And that's my brand. I don't really go more for the professional side, more for the educational early development side. 
Um, mm-hmm. That's why I ask now from that moment, should I bring another partner in that, or should I mentor another partner or do I have the time to do it? Or should I just stick with what I got um, from what I want to build? Okay, that's a great question. And it's a two part question. First, you need to understand that if you're feeling burnt out already, or you're feeling the stresses of making this brand a reality or your reality, then you need to do what I call mirror time. Okay, mirror time is what I do for personal development coaching, when especially to entrepreneurs, where that right? Giving out, giving out, giving out, but they don't spend the time. Here's what I say. They spend so much energy giving out, but they don't spend the time. You need to consider yourself as an engine, correct? And the engine basically is, it could be in a bus, it could be in a truck, it could be in a train. It just depends people you want to impact, how many people you want to move, how many, what kind of movement do you want to create, okay? But before you can create the movement, before this train can just chug along, must be, makes sense. So you need to work on you first, find out what are the things or the, should I say, the barriers that you need what are stresses? What are the things that you need to change to fix you first? And then when you are fit and ready to go, then if need be, you may find out that you don't even need the partner because what we're doing, we're doing the wolf thing. We're screaming wolf, 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 wolf. But the deal is we need to work on us first. And I'm telling you that from a personal um, experience, you know, I'm working on for books at the same time. How in the world are you doing that? I'm a father, I'm a husband, and I'm also a consultant with several different companies and or private schools. So how in the world do you get to do all of this? And I try to read four books a month. How do this? And now what it is basically is understanding focus. I don't do all of these things at the same time. I elicit a certain amount of energy that's going to be devoted to that one particular thing. I put down but most people have a difficult time putting something down and picking up what's most important. To get to the root of your question, basically, is you need to find out what's most important to you. And then after that, work on yourself to make you better, the best engine that can go in any kind of crowd and or automobile, depends on how many people you want to pull along. Once you fix you, then you can train anyone else. But if you're not in place, the training that you're going to give someone is going to be faulty. Perfect. Great answer. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, We do have another question from the chat, but I'm going to jump to one of our pre-submitted questions before I I get to the chat. How do you protect your brand, especially as a female, when you're trying to evoke a sense of confidence and strength while others um, are trying to tear you down and um, call you the B word? Um, So negative Mm -hmm. words coming. So how do you protect your brand when you're trying to evoke that confidence? All right. Can I share my screen? Is that okay with you? Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I, I, I want to, I want to, I want to throw this down here. I want to demonstrate this so you guys can see, can you guys all see my, uh, my little notepad here? Everybody yeah, good? We're good. All right. So um, the, 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 the B word, there's a lot of things that can come to mind when I think of the B word, I can think of, um, you know, best uh, I can think of bold, right? So what we need to do is to educate You need to educate um, those individuals and get a transformation happening because um, transformation comes through education to help them to see and look at you for these three things, for your skills, your talent, expertise, and how these things can you be used to make someone a different B word better? (laughs) So a person will struggle with that if they don't know who they are. And I have said it before, and I will continue to preach it. I said, if you don't know who you are, then any other identity will do. So that individual could be struggling with an identity into the issue, but you know, conflict that they need to settle first. And once they settle that conflict, it doesn't matter if you call me Kunta Kente. I know who I am. 
I don't care if you call me a, a, a bus, but I'm actually a Ferrari. I know who I am. I don't care what you call me. They used to call me Akon when I was going to university in, in the US and they used to make fun of me, but I know who I am. So self-identity or this brand identification, let's go back to the subject matter here. If we know who we one else said, if we know who we are, it doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, shining, doesn't matter. You go out there, it's going to rain, sun, shine, sleep on the same individual. Identity is key. And once you know who you are, you have that sense of pride, of confident conviction. I know who I am. It's a representation of you. And once you tell people who you are, then guess what? You just leave the chips where they fall, but you need to educate them through your behavior and or mannerism. So then they will, you be known for your skills, your talent, your expertise. All of this is called your gift. And so the goal of educating them is to open up your package, is to open up your package. This is you, you're a box. You got to open up this package and show someone what's inside here. They're only looking at the wrapper. And some of them, this is just a candy wrapper. And they're not getting paid to wrap. You need to open up the package and say, this is really who I am. Remember we talk about it? We need to redefine. We need to reposition. And we really need to represent back ourselves to the global marketplace. And here's what I want you to, let me, let me wrap this up with this right here because this, I'm getting excited up in here for this right here. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about people who are calling us names, I mean, I am basically the, the, the Paul of that. I mean, there's so many names I've gotten and I made sure my skin is very oily because no label will stick on me. That person needs to first understand that. I think they need to understand that there's 7.8 billion people in the world if one of them don't like you, I guarantee you there's 7.9, what, 7.899999999 other people out there who would love to know your name. Does that answer our question? That is powerful. Know your worth, know yourself. I love it. We have a few more and questions. And there's always more people who haven't met you yet. Trust me, there's more to you than the world sees yet. It's part of branding. Absolutely. Yes, Another question that came in from the chat from Marie, what strategies can mm -hmm. we employ when our personal brand is threatened by external forces? Oh, this is, this is great. Oh man. I'm loving these questions right now. So when there's a threat, when there is a threat, that means that you are doing something good. You're doing something good. People don't talk about people who are, they say birds of a feather, they flock together. If someone is just like you, I always say that, um, you know, if a, if a person doesn't have haters, that then they are one of them. If you don't have haters, then, you know, you're a hater too. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when people are talking about you because, you know, they threaten, you see, that's a passive statement saying that, your integrity and or your brand is threatened? No, threat is only detected by the beholder. The person or the attacker doesn't feel the threat. This is you, you know, and I, and I hate to say it, but I'm gonna have to. We were all created that we were good. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But if someone comes from here and say that I am bad, no, that's their experience. And I don't worry about that. Everyone, just like a fingerprint, is entitled to their, his or her own opinion. And you just let them have their opinion and say, you know, that's yours. But there's still 7.7999. 7, 9, 9. Let me go deal with one of those individuals. No, we get stuck dealing with one individual and let one individual sink our ship when there's so much more waves to ride, don't get stuck at sure. Next question. Perfect. I'm not sure if this is a question or a comment from Alifia, my namesake. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. 
comment is Akon is a billionaire. Yes, he is. Um, when we are the only black in programs, there is pressure placed on us. Also, there is a perception that comes with being the only and pressure is placed on you to hold the weight for everyone else. You can do your best um, and see if there are other black. So I think this is a response to, um, to Tevin, but that's a great point, you know, especially when you're in a certain position and you are the only one, there's a certain pressure that, um, and weight that is put on your shoulder. Um, how do you, you know, protect your brand and, and follow through on that? All right, so don't define yourself by a title. Don't define yourself by a title. When you were born, you didn't have a title. All of these things are attained. So what you need to understand is going brand fiction. You need to understand who you are. And here is the greatest part. Here is the greatest part. The greatest part is that if you're the only one, that means significant. That means you can't fail here. You need to make sure you're doing your utmost best to make sure you survive, you represent, and you show up every time. Because when you survive, you're going to have to teach projects how you survive. Because that simply means if that was the case and you're the only one there and then you just um, fall off or you didn't make it, you have no predecessors. And who's going to follow you? You are going to become the teacher who is going to help the ones who are coming to take your spot. So rejoice when you're the only one. That means, man, we got more territories to overtake. Rejoice that, man, this is a very interesting position to be in. And a good friend of mine, um, Deputy Steve, he's the only one, only the first black lawyer that was in the TTC. I mean, you should be like, whoa, I'm sure he was probably, you know, feeling a little um, threatened at the time. But what we really need to understand, guys, we need to go back to go and spend more time in the mirror, identify who we are, identify our skills or talent and expertise, and then show them to the world, dispose them to other, deploy them to other people instead of depending on the employment. So while you're in the employment, deploy yourself because your gifts, skills, and expertise were meant for the global marketplace, not just one person's opinion. Perfect, well said. Um, have a comment from the chat, perspective matters, and that is absolutely correct, Marie, thank you. Um, one of our pre-submitted questions, many um, people are working from home and participating on Zoom calls. How do you um, present your brand that is well representative of you? Mm -hmm. All right. That's a great question. Fantastic question. So here you are, you're at home, you're hanging out, you're chilling, you know, but you need to understand that people are watching you. You're on a display all the time, all the time. Even when you think they're not watching, social media never sleeps, okay? So even if you're on social media, let's say, for example, from 1 to about 2 um, a.m., when you go to sleep, social media is still awake. I remember what I said about your brand. Your brand is an extension, is an ambassador of you in your absent. So how you show up on social media, I could have shown up, oh, well, you know, um, right now I could have just come out with a t-shirt. I could, no, I'm, I'm representing who I am. And so depending on how you decided to show up on social media, then people will learn to either like, and I'm not talking about a Facebook like, all right? No, and trust whatever you have to say, whatever information you're posting thing this is how they get to like know and trust you based on how you show up it is your brand remember you are the brand first before the product ever materializes so whatever you do on social media it is an extension of you if you want to come out there and be rowdy if you want to be foul with your language then basically that's an extension of you and so people will know you because you have sown a seed out there that produce a type of fruit that left a bad taste in their mouth. So that's the branding aspect. You are the individual, you are the brand, but branding is your interaction while you're on social media. So I wanna encourage those people who are out there on social media, 
Don't show up good because good can always be better. Don't show up better because better can always be best. Show up right because right is consistent. It doesn't get righter. It doesn't get most right. It's just right. And right means my definition that works for me works for you. Good can always get better. And there's someone who has better who always wants the best. When it's right, it works for me. It works for you. Show up right. We have another great question from the um, audience, uh, Andrew. Oh, bring the question. Bring it. Oh, this is a good one. Tips bring on it. combating imposter syndrome, especially when you are you're doing your personal brand at a high level, executive level, mm -hmm. an unforgiving or a lack of diverse uh, space. For example, medicine, academia, investment banking. I've heard this term um, thrown on quite a bit. Um, imposter syndrome. So, how do you combat imposter syndrome? All right, so I want you to look at this. I'm working on a book right now and um, it's targeted at professionals. And entrepreneurs and are in, on the front line. And it's called Wearing Many Hats. It's gonna be dropping probably around late summer. And the purpose of this book is that individuals stand and commit to memory that this imposter syndrome it can be placed on them, but they have to agree with it. Any effect on them. What does that simply mean? That wearing many hats, I am also, I'm a father, so I have children. But I can't be a father all the time. I am also a husband, so I have here, right? I'm also a consultant to um, private schools and so forth, right? So I, I have wearing a different hat. I'm also a personal development coach, so I am wearing a different hat. And then they call me a few weeks to be doing another TEDx, so I'm wearing a different hat. And so I come back inside and I'm in the studio, I'm doing my live podcast, I'm wearing a different hat. And then what I am I am the same individual. And the reason why I'm able to do this because I have made a first impression myself. All these arrows going out are called expression. You have to first impress yourself or brand yourself before you can work on the branding aspect. So you have to impress yourself first. That means spend time in the mirror, getting to know who you are, what you have, and how you can use what you have to serve a need or meet a need in the marketplace or pay, relieve a pain point. And then you know what hat, what skills, what expertise to embody when you're put on those different stages. It's the same you expressed in different ways. You understand what I'm saying? And if I go a little deeper to the creator, he created male and female. Listen, it's not just women that's in the world. They're little babies, the little boys, the little girls. You look up in the sky, you see the beautiful sunshine. You see him in different ways, but he has impressed himself and then express it. So people need to understand that it's imposter syndrome. It's something that they bought in. And they buy the syndrome, they'll always live it. And a syndrome basically is an expression of many symptoms. That's what a syndrome is. Biologically, because my background is anatomy, physiology, and a biology major, and that's what it's about. So a syndrome is the expression or the outward manifestation of different symptoms. So symptoms can simply mean you have lack of self-confidence. You're lacking something and you are actually depending on the world or doing something for the crowd so you can get that next fix, so you can feel great about yourself, so you can get that high. But when you know who you are, no other identity will do. And you don't need another high just to make you feel good about yourself. Because if that were the case, then you're going to be on a roller coaster, up and down, up and down, up and down and you're going to wear yourself out. You have to understand you're just wearing these different hats and you're expressing your expertise in many different ways in different areas to meet different needs, but it's still you. I hope that helps. 
That is powerful. And I'd like to show, share the comment from Alethea and um, Alethea Kador and Marie. Um, mirroring, mirroring is the best strategy. Look at yourself and affirm and validate every morning. I have value in everything I say. Correct. I am valuable. So yes, affirmations are definitely um, key. And Marie says, yes, know work yourself. Words. Yes. So Work great comments, everyone. Great feedback. I am very conscious of our time. We are at eight o'clock. And so I'm going to wrap it up with asking you, Andrew, what are your top 10 tips when it comes to personal I, branding? Good. There's so many. Uh, I, I'm number one. So let's rock them out just like this. Right? Number one, you got you really got to spend more time in the mirror. So you want to know you know you okay and you need to know what you have right so you got to know what you have if santa claus shows up at the door and you were expecting a toy car but instead you got a toy bunny and you knew that was inside the box then santa lied to you and what i'm saying to you is that understanding that you are a gift to the world, but you have to open up your package so people will get to know who you are. All right, so you got. And number three, you know, this is all about knowing. So you have to have knowledge, right, of yourself. Okay, my pen is running. So you have to have knowledge of yourself, but how? This is the most important part right here. How does your gifts meet? a need in the marketplace because people are the marketplace, right? All right. The next one is, this is number four. Oh, this is six. So number four is you wanna understand that not everyone and this is powerful. Not everyone will like you. Love you first. Because if you don't love you first, you can't love people. It's impossible. Okay? The next one is change happens. So shift. You're thinking. All right. And so shift your thinking, right? You must take action. You must take action. Okay. That's number six. Moving on. Number seven, eight, nine, ten. You have to understand these three concepts, life, alive, and living. They will transform your life. Life is the gift. This is just a gift. That's all it is. And everyone who's, who has it knows it. Alive is only the availability or the evidence of life that tells you that you're alive. It's the presence of the symptoms that tells you that you're alive. Alive meaning I can breathe, I can interact with my atmosphere, I can exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen. Basically, alive means that they're present, or they call them life signs. Living, living is when you take your life and then you transform the world by showing them your gift. Living is an action is an active response to life. It's living your life. If you don't live, you're not alive. You're simply just existing. All right? You have to let go. I mean, I know it's a chapter in my book, but I'm going to put it. You have to let go. You have to let's. Mm. 
grow. And you have to now let's go. Hold on to the past. Victory is bigger than your past. That's why the windshield in front of you is bigger than the rear view mirror. And lastly, how was that number nine? Yes, this is nine. So focus on your strengths. Too much time trying to rehabilitate our weaknesses that even the strengths get weak. And from a physiological perspective and a personal development coach, I realize that sometimes if we don't keep training our strong muscles, they will atrophy and they become weakened. And so it debilitates the movement and or range of motion in particular joints. And the, the last part, number 10, is that I want you to understand that you were made for this. You were made for this. You're not an accident. You're not an accident. You were made for this. And whatever you go through in life, last one, the best is yet. You haven't success yet. You haven't lived your best life yet. It doesn't matter how many products and or service come out there. They're always evolving based on what? Emotional responses to product and or service. What does that mean? Your product and or service based on your brand and your brand identification. Need. You need to meet a need. Remember, you got five fingers, but each of them have a different print. It's okay to be different, but you got to know different helps someone else identify how they fit in the global marketplace. Wow. Thank you so much, Andrew. Yeah. Powerful. The best is yet to come. What a way You're to finish. Welcome. Yes. So many great nuggets that you've shared with us tonight. And, you know, the chat uh, room is lighting up with comments and feedback participants. Great presentation. Um, hands off, this is by far one of the best presentations that I've had the opportunity to participate in. So thank you for educating us, informing us, enlightening us, um, and inspiring us. You know, I feel pumped to, to start off um, or my, the rest of my year. Um, before we yes. close out, can you share with the audience again how people can get in touch with you if they want to explore personal branding further, if they want to um, book you for any events or sessions? How can people get in touch with you, Andrew? Uh, wonderful. Thank you for the honor. Just say thank you guys for the opportunity just to be here, just to and share just a dialogue and to have this conversation that basically should have been had a long, long time ago. And it's a conversation that it's not going to end today. It's a continuous one that we realize that we're in a world, a diverse world, and we need to understand that we need to first understand who we are. And until we do that, we will not be able to serve anyone if we haven't learned how to serve ourselves. So what you can do is you can find me at my home at w. Com. What does this sound like? A-N-D-R-E-W-G-U-Y-S-P-E-A-K-S dot com. You can find me out there on social media. It's uh, Andrew Guy Speaks. I'm out there on YouTube, Andrew Guy Speaks. I'm out there on Twitter, Andrew Guy Speaks. I'm on the Instagram, Andrew Guy Speaks. And the only place that is different for me is Facebook. It's Andrew E. Guy Speaks. All right. And that's it. And if you're looking for personal development coaching, um, one of the sessions now have a couple clients I'm working with is that work-life integration, work-life integration. How do we help individuals, specifically professional, bridge the gap between work and life? We don't call integration because when you're enriched, it shows up in every other area of your life, on your job, at home, where you work and play. And that's what I do. Slogan here, I best in people. And that's what I'm here to do. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Andrew. And thank you everyone for coming up, for showing up for yourselves tonight and um, taking in some of these um, wonderful um, insights from Andrew. For those of you who have not yet subscribed to the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association, I encourage you to do so. You can find us at www.dufferincountycba.org. Subscribe to our newsletter so that you can stay um, up to date with all of our upcoming events. Our next event is February 2nd, um, talking about of the nuts and bolts of municipal politics. So I encourage you again to um, stay tuned for more information, register, subscribe to the newsletter. If you have not yet registered to be uh, become a member of the association, I encourage you to do so. And of course, um, we always accept donations to make sure that we can continue all of our programming, especially our scholarships. So again, um, visit our website, www.dufferincountycba.org and stay tuned for more information. Thank you so much everyone for your time and I'm going to play our music to kick us out. And I hope you keep right. on dancing. You guys take care. Have a good night.